All right, so this new series is all about getting started with MySQL. So MySQL is a type of database. Uh, it uses the SQL language like most relational databases do. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get started, where you can find and install MySQL and get started using it. Now, whenever you install uh, one of these database and web server solutions like MAMP or WAMP or XAMPP, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, what you get included in here, like MAMP, for example, stands for Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So you're getting all of these things together in one big bundle. So I'm going to use this one uh, because I'm on Mac OS right now. So I'm going to use the MAMP version just to get started. Uh, if you can go to the MAMP.info website and do the free download. Um, you will get a bundle that includes both MAMP and MAMP Pro. We're just going to, both will be installed. We're just going to use MAMP, the free version of this. Bear in mind, MAMP is also available on Windows. So if you're on Windows, don't worry. This isn't going to be a Mac OS only tutorial. This is available for Mac and Windows. So you download that and install it. And then I, ha <clears throat> I happen to have it open here. First thing you're going to do when you start up MAMP is you want to start the servers. Now, I've already got mine running. You can see the little green button here. This will say start servers. You click on this button and then you'll have these options right here turned to green. So Apache and MySQL. Those two programs are now up and running. They are two separate programs. MySQL is the database program. Apache is the web server program. Okay. Once you have that, what you're going to do is you're going to open the web start page. This is sort of the, like the home page for your Apache MAMP installation. Inside of here, there's a bunch of tools and PHP MyAdmin. This is actually a website built with PHP specifically for working with MySQL. And this is the tool that we're going to use to get into it. So I'm going to click on this link. Tools, PHP MyAdmin. Click on that. And here it is. This is the PHP MyAdmin website. And it's purely a website for managing your database. Over on the left hand panel here, this is a list of all the databases that are currently installed. Now I know this is a database program. We're talking about multiple databases. Think of MySQL as the program. And you can think of these as sort of folders. Inside these folders, it's like we've got um, a whole bunch of different files that are all clustered together. And in those files is all the information, all the data that we want to save. Now, I think one of the best ways to think about a database, a relational database anyway, is if you're familiar with a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet is like a single table inside of a database. A database is a collection of tables. So you've got columns and you've got rows. I've got a bunch of movie data here. So I've got some columns. I've got titles at the top of each column, movie ID, movie title, director, year, and genre. So we've got all this information in one column about the movie title. There's another column that's all about the years that these movies were made or released. So different columns have different types of information. So this column, these are all strings. These are all numbers. These are all numbers. They're years. These are strings. These are strings. So everything in this column needs to be the same data type, the same type of information. So that's important to know. Now, when you're building a relational database, one of the things that you're always looking to do is how can I more efficiently store this information? So I'm going to look at the genre column here for just a moment. Think about all of these things. Now I've got the word fantasy written out a bunch of times. I've got the word sci-fi written out a bunch of times. I've only got this one screen's worth of data, but if I had hundreds of thousands of records, hundreds of thousands of rows, so each of these rows can also be called a record. If I've got hundreds of thousands of these, I'm writing this word again and again and again. I'm duplicating all that information. So one way that people have to sort of condense the data is wherever you find repetition happening, 
let's build another table. So let's say I had another table, another spreadsheet, and it had two columns in it, one that was a genre ID and one that was a genre title. Inside here, I put all the things that are being duplicated. Then these numbers, so one for fantasy, two for sci-fi, those numbers, I will come back into here and I'll replace all the fantasy with a number one. Just like that. All the sci-fis become number twos. Now I, I have greatly reduced the amount of information required. So instead of having these big long strings, I now have one single digit for every one of these entries. There's still duplication, but I've reduced the amount of space and memory required to save all that duplicated information. Okay, so we have one spreadsheet, one table with columns and rows for movies. We've got one table for col with columns and rows about genres. In a database, these two things together would be the database. I would have two tables, one called movies, one called genres, and they would be together forming a table. And the fact that I've got numbers in here that reference numbers over here, that's a relationship between the tables. And that's why it's called a relational database. All right, so let's mimic this database over inside of MySQL. So in PHP my admin, when you first get it up and running, first get it started, um, I recommend the first time that you go into the user accounts and where you see the root user, this is sort of the default super user that controls everything. Um, if this says no for password, which it often does when you start, I recommend that you go in and edit the privileges on these three. Start at the top, start with the 127.001, come in here, edit privileges, set a password on it. Set a password that you know, but put a password on it. Put the same password on all three of these. So pause the video now, go and do that, set the same password on all three of those. All right, assuming you're back now and that you've set the password on that, um, you might want to close and reopen MAMP. Um, make sure that that's got the new password in there. Now, once the user accounts are set up, we're gonna to go to the databases tab. This is gonna be the same as what's over here. We're gonna create a new database and let's call it, uh, let's call it movies. Don't have to capitalize anything if we don't want to. And this is called the coalition collation. Basically, it's just the, uh, the default character set that's going to be used for all the text information in that database. This is a good one to start with. The UTF-8 general case, case insensitive is what the CI stands for. So we'll create that. And there we go. Now we've got movies showing up in this list over at the side. And if you'll notice at the top here, this is also sort of a breadcrumb navigation. This is the database that we're in. I can click on this to go back up to the top level, looking at all the databases. Here they are. And if I click on here, or I click on over here, it takes me into that area. Now I'm looking at specifically this database. There are no tables. PHP My Admin is really good at giving you information up here at the top. So start looking up at the top here to see the results of whatever you've just done. All right, we're gonna create a table. We'll call it Movies. Now. One, two, three, four, five. There are five columns. So we're gonna create five columns and we'll use these names right here. So I want five columns, go. All right, now this is the blank form for me to fill out. There was going to be a movie ID, which is a number. Um, I don't have to specify a length. I'm just gonna say, okay, it's an integer. Collation, I'm going to use the default, so I'm not going to specify anything here. Uh, null, I'm not going to allow it to be null. Index, set this to primary. Um, we're going to just go OK on this. Primary is the type of key that we're setting. We're saying that this column is 
sort of the most important column in our table. And the reason for that, if we look at all these numbers, they are all unique. The fact that they're sequential is secondary. They are unique. Every row has a completely unique number. If I say, hey, movie number 16, we know that movie number 16 is talking about this, and it's not going to be any other movie because this value is the primary key. It's the unique thing that identifies every single record. Okay, so we've got that set to primary. AI means auto increment. Great thing to put on a primary key, especially if you've got it set to an integer. If it is an integer and you've got this set to primary key, auto increment, it's going to automatically look to see, okay, what's the highest number we've got? I'm going to add one to that. Every time you add another record, it's going to be able to put that number in there for you. All right, so I'm just going to quickly put all these in here. I'll jump ahead in the thing till I'm done this. Okay, so I filled in the basic information here. Uh, movie title, director, year, genre ID. Now I've renamed this as genre ID instead of just genre because we are going to put the numbers in here. We're going to create the second table and create the connection between them. Uh, there is actually a data type called year, which will know that it is a year as opposed to just a number. It's also going to keep the numbers a little bit smaller for us. Director and, var and uh, movie title, varchar. This stands for variable character, which basically it's a string. And the length is the maximum length. So we're trying to keep the amount of memory required for each record, for each value, for each column inside each record to a minimum. So what's the biggest possible movie title I can think of? Well, I'm going to say 80, you know, I could even go up to 100 characters, 120 characters, but this should be more than sufficient. And then director, well, that's name. So 50 characters should be more than enough for any name that I'm going to put inside of there. Uh, storage engine, we're going to keep the default. Collation, we're going to take the default for the database. We're not going to enter anything in here. And I haven't added anything beyond the uh, primary key and auto increment for the movie ID. All right, so click save. There we go. Now we have created the columns. So this is the table structure. Now, if I wanted to add some information in here, there's an insert tab. I can click on that and we can leave the movie IDs blank because those we set to auto increment. And then we'll just take their first couple here. So Labyrinth and Highlander. Labyrinth was Jim Henson. And the year 1986, I believe it was. And we're going to make sure fantasy is number one for that. Okay, so we have that. And we can click either one of these go buttons. We can click the go button down here. It's going to go back to our previous page. Or you can choose to sort of refresh this page, insert another new row. I'm going to go back to the previous page. There we go. And remember I was saying about the messages being displayed really well in PHP My Admin? So it told us what it did. Inserted row ID. This was the last ID that was used. That would be the movie ID. And this is actually the SQL statement right up here. This is the command that gets run. And here it is again. This is the command that got run to put the data in there. So in the future videos in this series, I'm going to be showing you how to write all of these commands. SQL is actually one of the easiest languages to learn if you're doing any kind of programming. SQL is the quickest and easiest. To, to learn the commands that you're going to use 90% of the time takes almost no time at all. Very, very simple language. Okay, so we look at the structure. There it is. We look at the Browse tab. There it is. There's our first two rows put in here. And now... I'm inside of the table movies. If I want to add that other table, I can come up here to movies. I've gone back up to the database level, and then I'm going to create another table. This one's going to be called genres. It's going to have two columns. And then we're going to do the same thing here, genre ID and that. Now, I will create this, and I will also export it. So I'm going to show you how that happens, and then I will include these export files for you. So you can actually just um, go through the process of creating one, but then you can import the genre one. So in my movies database, I'm going to go to my movies table. 
So here I am in the table movies and I'm going to click export. I'll do a quick one. Yeah, SQL's the type that I want. Go. Here we go. This is the export command. So here's the SQL right here. Create table movies. And then inside the parentheses, here's a list of all the columns with all the information that you need about them. And then insert into movies. There's the data being put in there. And alter table movies, add the primary key movie ID. So that's making this column, the movie ID, into the primary key. And then it's setting the auto increment on it. And so after it's inserted these records, it's putting the auto increment and it's setting the uh, next value to three. So the next time you insert a record, number three is automatically going to be the movie ID. So I'll give you these export files. Um, there are other options. If you go into custom, we can say that we want to include, um, output it to a file or just view it as text. That's the default. That's what we just did. And we can also come down here for the, uh, there's options. This add drop table one, this means I want to delete the old version of the table and completely recreate it. Add the create table statement. So yes, I want to create the tables. If you check this, it's going to check to see if it already exists. So if it doesn't exist yet, then I'm going to create it. And for the data, we can truncate table before the insert. So clear out the table before we're putting stuff in. Um, tons and tons of options inside of here. So what I will do is I'm going to just export the structure for these two tables for you so you can look at that. And then if you want, you can run the import statement. So if you go to the import tab and go up to the top, go up to the movies, click on import, and then I will give you the file so you can choose the file. Then you can just run it and it will create the two tables, the movies and the genres, and it'll put in the data for you. So what I recommend is that you go through the process of trying to create them first yourself. And then just so that you have the same structure as me for the upcoming videos, run the import statement to get the exact same data as me. So you can make sure that things are going to be in line for the next ones. All right. So um, if you ever want to get rid of all the tables that are in your database, you can also come to the structure page, go to your database tab, structure tab, and then you'll see a list of all your tables. Drop is the command that will completely delete the table. So all the data, all the structure, all of it gone. Something to keep in mind with databases is that there is no undo. If you delete something or drop something, it is gone. So just bear that in mind while you're working with this. Okay, so that's it for sort of getting started. I'm going to have a whole bunch more videos in this series where I talk about the different types of commands, how you can get the data out of the database, how you can insert or update or delete the data, how you can create tables, how you can modify the tables. I'm going to be covering all those things. So if you have any questions about getting started, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Look in the description for the uh, export files that I'm going to create for you. And as always, thanks for watching.